How you doing out there, folks? My name is Ray, and this is Chris. And we're here today at our UTG Pro facility in Livonia, Michigan, uh, with our new segment, Under the Gun Operator's Manual. Operator's Manual will be focused on educating our customers, as well as introducing exciting and new products. That's right, Chris. And for our first episode, we're going to show you guys how to center your scopes and also explain why that's important to do before you sight them in. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. As mentioned, scope centering is an important step in setting up your scope prior to sighting in. It is also very important if you use your scope on different platforms frequently. Scope centering basically guarantees that your scope is set up in its factory optimum center to give you the maximum available windage and elevation range. Imagine getting into a car that's already in third gear. That would basically leave you with fewer gears to use when you need them to achieve maximum performance. Now before we show you guys how to center your scopes, we want to go over a few common symptoms you could be facing if your scope is drastically off-center before you sight it in. You run out of windage or elevation adjustment range. Your scope won't hold zero. Your reticle or crosshairs appear to be jumping all over. Your scope makes major adjustments when only minor ones are dialed in. If you are experiencing any of these issues, you may need to recenter your scope and re-zero your scope. Now we're going to show you two very easy methods to find the optimal center of your scope. The first of which we call the mirror method. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. First of all, you will need a mirror and a well-lit area. Your bathroom or bedroom mirrors will be the easiest to work with. As long as you have a well-lit area, you'll be okay. Start by setting your scope to its lowest power if it's not a fixed power scope. Set the AO or parallax to infinity. Now, press your scope flat against the surface of the mirror. Keep in mind to leave the lens cap on if your scope has an integrated sunshade. If your scope is at its factory-centered position, you will not see anything but your crosshair. If it is not centered, you will see a shadow of your reticle in the reflection. Use your windage and elevation adjustments to line the shadow up with the true reticle. Your scope is centered. It's really that simple. This is really no magic. Here's why. I'm sure you've heard about a sundial and how it uses sunlight and the shadow cast from a fixed object to estimate time. Well, you're basically doing the same thing, except instead of changing the position of the sun, or light bulb in your case, you're changing the dial position by making turret adjustments. Another way of saying this is you're lining up your scope's interior with the light transmission. Now if you are not in the comfort of your own home, you may not have a mirror available. Out in the field, counting clicks or revolutions is the second method and is also very easy to achieve. Let's take a closer look at how that works. Counting revolutions or clicks is really quite simple. Start by turning either the windage or elevation knob all the way to one side. Be careful not to overturn. Once you feel a little bit of resistance, you're all the way to one side. You should see a number next to the turret index dot. Remember this number and write it down. Now rotate the knob all the way in the other direction while counting how many times you pass the number that you have memorized and written down. Now turn the dial back in the other direction for half of the revolutions you just counted. By repeating this step with your other adjustment turret, you will have effectively centered your scope to its approximate center. It's that easy. Welcome back. We've relocated over to UTG headquarters and here we're going to wrap it all up for you. That's right, Chris. Uh, first off, we want to start by saying that centering your scope perfectly is going to be next to impossible unless you have a precision optics instrument such as this one here. Uh, the methods we've provided are not perfect, nor are they meant to be. Uh, they're simply to help eliminate point of impact as well as lack of adjustment issues that you may be having with your scope. That's right, Ray. We're going to use a V-block to check our, our modifications and our adjustments. Um, an easy way, if you don't have a professional V-block, is to make one out of cardboard, like this one here. We've included some instruction here on how to construct one of your own. Now, keep in mind that this verification process isn't really necessary. It's just another beneficial way to check your previous modifications. This method can also be used to center your scope, but it's very time consuming. 
Basically, you place your scope in a B-block, then look through your scope and find a stationary point on the wall, such as a light switch. Then rotate your scope in the B-block. The center of your reticle should not drift away from your selected target. If you see your reticle moving off-center, you may need to make further adjustments using your windage and elevation knobs until you get minimal off-center movement. After making these final adjustments, your scope will now be ready to be zeroed at the range. We hope you found this video useful and entertaining. Yes, thanks for taking the time to watch, and we'll see you next time on Operator's Manual.